One of the problems with sex dolls and sex bots now is the objectification of the human body and what that does to the way we relate to one another outside of sex. So if a man, for example, is having all of his sexual experience with a machine, he begins to treat women as literal objects. There's a lot of studies being done in the UK in the last 10 years that show a clear link between heavy use of pornography, for example, and the early breakdown of marriages which says that if we learn to objectify human beings, we have real trouble relating to them, either as parents or as, you know, in friendships and certainly in marriages, um, especially when that other person is a person of the opposite biological sex. Um, There's also the issue, though, Joey, of what I call cyber sex. Um, In some parts of the world now, cyber sex is cited in divorce courts quite a lot. People, men and women, having close and sometimes erotic even sexual relationships with folks they've never met, except online. Wow, yeah. And you combine that with what we call haptic technology, which is tech that fools the senses, and most of our listeners are familiar with VR and what that does, but now we're developing tech that fools not only sight, sound, and touch, but smell and taste. So we're getting to the stage now where we someone can have a truly interactive sexual relationship online without ever being in the same room, as it were. You combine that, though, with what we're doing in robotics now, and there are many exciting and good things about robotics we can talk about if you want to, but we're we're anthropomorphizing machines. We're making them appear human, and we're giving them the ability to emulate human emotion as what we call social bots that were first developed in Japan. And so you bring that all together, haptic technology, um, emotional bots, and the cyber sex trend, and you're left with a situation where for many people, it's just the next obvious step to go and have a relationship with a bot. That could eventually change marriage again, in the sense that if someone says, well, hey, you know, my relationship with machine is is erotic, it's romantic, it's intimate, why can't I have a marriage with a machine? So there's lots of ramifications beyond just personal morality, I think. Am, am I right to say that robots are, or, or artificial intelligence that they possess, it's still very complex spreadsheets, right? I mean, we're, we're not talking robots that actually acquire real emotions or acquire consciousness. People today talk about machine learning, but very on the back of that now, very soon we have emerging now what we call deep learning, which is another word for that is artificial neural networks, for short, ANNs. Uh, These are networks of computers that process information in a similar way to your brain. So neural networks learn by example, not by having coding given to them. They learn by watching examples of a certain behavior, identifying patterns within the behavior, and then they infer rules on the back of those patterns and doing all of that they figure out how best to do something on their own. So they're basically self-programming machines. And this could be great news for, you know, organizations like the church in many ways, but in terms of robotics and sex bots in particular, it just lends another layer of pseudo reality to a relationship that isn't real at all. And as I said, one of the big problems ethically to come from that is what it does to the way we do relate to other human beings. Gotcha. gotcha. All right. So another scenario that I thought about, and, and this is, um, the, we, we don't have to spend a lot of time with this, but the, the potential of a spouse or, or a husband or wife, wife losing their spouse, so uh, becoming a widow or a widower, and the possibility of having a robot that is modeled after the personality of their former spouse because this this person is saying hey she or he was the love of my life i don't want a relationship with another person if i can have a robot that's just like my spouse that's what i would prefer what do you think about the morality of that or the potential uh, unhealthy unhealthiness of that? Well, is, it, wanna... is it even possible, do you think? Well, yes, there's no reason why a machine can't be built to look like someone else. We're doing that now. We've got robotic Einstein in some schools in America. It's built to intuit 
answers that Einstein would give to particular questions based on his writings and his speeches, and then giving those when kids ask a question. So yes, it's it's a possibility, but it's, and I don't mean to be crass here, I really don't, I don't want to be offensive, but it's a bit like saying, you know, my pet died, I'd like to clone my pet. You will always know yeah. that this isn't the real thing, uh, that this machine husband or wife isn't the real thing. And so I'm back to having a relationship with a machine. It doesn't matter who I w project them to be. The fact of the yep. matter is that it's still a machine. So we still have to talk about the ethics of that. You know, if you talk about ethics, ethics is always based in some sort of morality and, and moral worldview. And as a Christian, I would say, I think that, um, you know, you, you've got problems still with Jesus saying things like, if you imagine it in your mind, you have essentially if you make a habit of imagining it anyway, you've essentially been right. doing it. And um, so I think with robots, we have to be very, very careful. We don't project onto them too much human-like qualities as if they are human beings. It's dangerous for yeah. us to do so.